In this video, we're going to be discussing key signatures. Now, key signatures basically affect the way that you read the stuff. Now, to understand what that means, basically, when you have a stuff like this and you have a cliff attached to it, uh, that cliff also shows you in which key the staff is. So, because the gaps between the notes here, between the E and the F and the B and the C, they, they are semitones, um, this staff is in C major. And so when you put notes on the staff, you are effectively putting notes down in C major. If you wanted to change that, let's say, let's say you wanted to, to write something in G major, and you had an F sharp, down there, uh, you would have to write the sharp in front of each note. And that's fine if you only have to do it once, but when you have a lot of sharps, um, especially if you have a bar line right there, uh, because a bar line cancels any sharps that you had before. And so you're coming along, that I hit the bar line, you got another F sharp, now suddenly you've got to write another sharp. It's tedious, it makes life difficult. So musicians want to make life a little bit easier. And so we add a key signature. And so that just basically just shows that all the Fs are F sharps. And now we don't have to worry about, about adding the sharps in front of each F that we covered off because now the, the staff itself has changed. Uh, now the staff has a semitone between here and here, and again between here and here. So that's really the function that, that a key signature serves. Uh, and this also this helps for some people who wonder why the key signature comes first. And so this, this, this is why the key signature belongs with the cliff. And then the time signature is something that comes afterwards. That, that just, well, this wouldn't be 2-4, this would be 4-1, I believe. Uh, but it comes afterwards that's kind of added on top of the, the notes. Um, so, that just gives the basic overview of what a key signature is. Now, the important thing to remember about key signatures is just the structure that they have. But before we get to that, we're just going to, we're just, going to just recap a little bit and just uh, have a look at our circle of fifths here. Um, so, if you recall, the circle of fifths just um, lists the, uh, the keys. So we have C, G, D, A, E, B, F sharp, and then C sharp over here. So each time you go up a fifth and you add in a sharp. And so the sharps go Father, Charles, goes down and ends battle. So G major has an F sharp, D major has an F sharp and a C sharp. And then if we go backwards here, we, we, we're going to um, take away a sharp each time and then eventually when we have no more sharps to take away with C major, we're going to go into the flats. So C F major has one sharp, one flat, which is B flat, and then B flat major has two flats, B flat, E flat, and E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, C flat. Over there. So um, that just basically lists them out. Um, but now we have to get the structure also of the of the key signature. Now, the reason why the structure is so important is for the same reason why on a on a dice or on a playing card, you use a line isn't very straight. You use a certain structure to put the dots or the spades or whatever you're using, um, just so that you can very quickly uh, see the number of of dots one, two, three, four, five, um, without having to actually count them out manually. Um, so, for the same reason, we have this, this pattern to, 
to the uh, to the shafts and flats. So in the treble clef, the shafts go Father Charles goes down and ends back. So there we go. Um, so it's, it's quite important to have the line going through the notes each time there. And, and also the ones that are in the space, be in the space properly. Um, now, this pattern stays the same if we go to bass clef. We go, Father Charles goes down and ends battle. And the pattern stays the same again if we go to the alto clef. So, uh, let me get this right here. Uh, Father Charles uh, wait a moment. Uh, sorry, other way around. <laughs> this is this is this this is why it changes. But Father uh, Charles. Oops. Father Charles goes down and ends battle. Down there. You can see that I'm not as familiar with the alto clef as I really should be, but the pattern stays the same here. Now, when I started, I, I started in the in the trip in the in the tenor clef by mistake, um, but that just shows why we can't keep the same pattern for the tenor clef. Because if you're writing the tenor clef, you would go Father Charles goes would suddenly be on a ledger line, and so we don't want that. And so that is why the only exception to this is the tenor clef. So in the tenor clef, we have Father Charles goes down and ends back down here. So it goes two up, two up, two up and one extra. So the pattern is a little bit different here. But for the ones that you use most often, the treble and the bass clef, uh, the pattern is always two, three, two, like that. And so now if we go and have a look at the flat key signatures, the same general principle applies. So what we're going to have this time we don't have to worry so much about doing all of them because there's no exceptions this time. So we'll just do the treble and the bass clef. And I'll leave the alto and the tenor as an exercise. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, so let's do the treble clef first. And so now our flats go, let me just pull this in. And, and it's back. So, Battle ends and down goes Charles's father. F major has a B flat, B flat major has a B flat and E flat, and so forth down the line. So we have battle ends and down goes Charles's father. Down there. So the pattern goes, you can read it either like this, or you, you could do it like, like that. Um, four and three, or you could do it as two, 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 and one. Um, whichever, whichever one you prefer. Let me just write it in the base clef just so that you can see the pattern again. Um, so, battle ends and down goes Charles's father. There we go. So, how do I just do that nicely a bit? Father. Um, so, however you want to remember this pattern, but it is a good idea to, to write these patterns out a couple of times in any event, uh, just, to, just to help getting used to um, uh, the, the, the note names as well. This is a good way to practice some of the, kind of the more common note names. Um, and that is all you need to know about key signatures.